Welcome to part three of the Taking Flight podcast, a CNY Pod Players production. Taking Flight is a 10 episode dramatic thriller fantasy about Brian Larson who, after an airline disaster, literally drops into a small Nebraska town where he struggles to uncover the mystery of his identity and his past. Taking Flight absorbs you in a world of colorful characters, paranormal phenomena, dangerous creatures, and suspense. Previously on Taking Flight, Brian reluctantly joins a group of townspeople investigating a mysterious creature in the newspaper office basement. He befriends the pretty newspaper editor, Ellie Farnsworth, and is confronted by the county sheriff who seems suspicious of Brian's failed memory about his past. Brian checks into the Hotel Allison, run by the androgynous Gunther, where strange noises echo in the night. And now, part three. Hello? Hello? What are you doing here? Sorry, what? Are you back? Or are you here because you survived? Who is this? Can we trust you? Do you really think you can change anything? Who are you calling? Who is this? All right. Do not go back there. Where? What are you talking about? Not... Okay, what's the plan? Plan, plan. What's the plan? I have no idea. Well, first things first. Get some clothes, a toothbrush, etc. And maybe a cheap watch so I can know what the hell time it is. Then I should really call... Uh, uh, Teresa. She can overnight me credit cards, I guess. And I can... This is all just some weird dream, isn't it? Or I've gone insane. People who are insane don't know they're insane, do they? Everything seems... Unreal. Well, even insane people need to change clothes and take a hot shower, right? I haven't showered since before this whole mess. I'm going to start smelling like the monkey habitat at the zoo. Okay. <clears throat> Up! And over to the general store. And then get some breakfast. So far my luck is holding out. The general store had my sizes. Jeans, underwear, socks. The shirts, plaid, aren't exactly the style I'm used to, but I suppose perhaps now I won't stand out so much around here. Bandage for my arm. Before I go up to shower and change, I should ask if Gunther knows anything about what that weird racket last night. Just a check. <laughs> oh, Mr. Larson. Forgive my robe and slippers. I'm getting a late start this morning. Been shopping, I see. Nice shirt. Have a good night? Mostly, yes. Thank you. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you about a couple of things, though. Did you call my room this morning? I guess it must have been around 7.30. <laughs> no. No, I, I don't have a wake-up service here, I I thought I told you that. Oh, you, you did, you did. Um, it's just that I, I got a call. Well, anyway, I, I was also wondering about the child. The child? Yes, I, I heard a child crying in the hotel late last night. and um, There's there's no child staying in the hotel, Mr. Larson. 
<clears throat> oh, well, maybe it was someone's TV. Mm, not likely. Certainly not mine. I go to bed pretty early. Perhaps it was from whoever's in the room above mine? They were making quite a bit of noise. The room above you? Yes. If you wouldn't mind asking them to keep the TV down... There's no TV in room 303, the room above yours. Sorry, I'm making too much of it. I'm sure they didn't realize how loud... Mr. Larson, there's no one else staying in the hotel at the moment. I'm sorry to say, you're my only guest. But I heard... No, I, I was sure I heard... Was it the knocking? I, I warned you about the knocking. No, the, the, there wasn't any knocking. There was a a strange, like, scraping, thumping noise, but that was from above, and peculiar music. Maybe it was coming from the bar down the street. You know, sometimes it gets pretty rowdy on Friday nights. No, it was definitely coming from the room upstairs. Like I said, you're my only guest. <laughs> but I'll check it out later for you if you'd like. Maybe my niece left a window open up there <coughs> or something. Will you be staying another night? Yes, I will. Betty, my niece, will be up later to straighten up. Have enough towels? Yes, I... Uh... Okay, then. Have a good day. Stay safe. I hear there's a storm blowing in. About the knocking. Hello, Mr... Uh, miss... Oh, shit. Nothing like a hot shower to make you feel human again. And Hank's bacon and eggs sound really good right now. Wow, it's pretty warm out here for... 937. Thank you, cheap Timex watch. Hey, cowboy. Nice shirt. <laughs> hey, Ellie. The general store has some really nice shirts, but I insisted on this right fancy western number. <laughs> it suits you. Sort of. What are you up to? Decided yet? Not really. I was just heading to Bernadine's for some breakfast. Want to join me? How would you like to go on a little adventure? Can I get breakfast first? I have egg sandwiches and coffee in the car here. Come on, I'll show you the exciting life of a Nebraska County reporter. Oh, how can I resist that? Okay. Get a good night's sleep? More or less. Thanks for the lift to the hotel last night. I know it was walkable, but you had several beers. And you don't have a car. No, I do not. And the mysteries surrounding Brian Larson continue to pile up. What did you do? Hitch to Nebraska? Part of the way. Okay. I guess you'll tell me when you're ready. Here, have an egg sandwich. They're from Bernadine's. You always drive around with two egg sandwiches and two cups of coffee? Half of that was for Sheriff Norris, but he'll just have to do without this morning. Will he be there? Where are we going? There's some excitement out at Rodriguez Ranch. What kind of excitement? This is a really good egg sandwich. Hank knows what he's doing. <laughs> Louise said there was some vandalism. Vicious and expensive vandalism, he called it, involving some of his cattle. Louise? Big guy, cowboy hat. How do you know him? Well, I don't. I kind of sort of met him at Bernadine's yesterday. He was also at the Critter Roundup at your office. You wouldn't let him in? Oh, no, I would not. Luis is a good guy, but he has a way of flying off the handle. So we'll see what this is all about. And Sheriff Norris will be there? Yeah, he tipped me off about it. We share information. I write the news, he upholds the law... That's not a problem, is it, that he's there? No, of course not. I guess it must be sort of serious? Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. His ranch is right off Route 20 up here. This is Route 20? Yep. Crazy Horse Memorial Highway. 
Oh my God, there's the hayfield and the boarded up house where I woke up, landed yesterday. I can't believe that was only yesterday morning. It feels like forever ago. Do you know who lives or lived in that house? That place? No idea. It's been vacant, abandoned as long as I've been here. How long has that been, Ellie? Going on six years now. I'm from Lincoln originally. Worked at the Journal Star for quite a while. Then I was off of the editorship at the Courier. Seemed like a nice, quiet life. I don't suppose you want to tell me what you do for a living. It's not very interesting. Hey, would you happen to know who around here drives a white van? A couple, maybe? White van? Not that I can think of. Doesn't sound familiar. Why? Who are they? I don't know. Young couple? What do they look like? Don't know. I'm not even positive it's a man and woman. Brian, are you trying to sound mysterious? Because it's working. Forget it. Here we are. Looks like Sheriff Norris just got here, too. Hi, Sheriff. Luis? Hey, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Where's my coffee? Must have forgot it. Hmm. Breaking in a new reporter? No, he's just tagging along. Luis, this is Brian Larson. Brian Luis Rodriguez. Hi. Luis? And you already met Sheriff Morris. Sheriff? Nice shirt. My God, what on earth happened to this cow? Intentional vicious slaughter, that's what. Louis found her like this this morning. When he called, I figured it was a coyote or a wolf attack. Or... She's just ready to go to market, too. But, as you can see, the genital area has been neatly cored out, almost surgical-like. Weren't no coyote or wolf that did this. Strangely, no blood anywhere. None. And most obvious of all, the head is... <sighs> missing. Also neatly cut off. How is that possible? What are you going to do about this, Sheriff? That cow was worth a lot of money to me. Cattle mutilation. What? Cattle mutilation. They've been reported around the country since the 1960s. What in God's name is she talking about? Ellie's somewhat of an expert on these kinds of strange goings-on. I'm not really an expert, but I do read a lot about unexplained phenomena and the paranormal. Paranormal mice. Sheriff, this is... The M.O. is always the same. One or two cows, sometimes sheep or other animals, found dead and mutilated. Genitals cut out, along with the tongue and the eyes. Cut out surgically. Like you said, Sheriff. Like with a scalpel or a laser. And there's never any trace of blood in the area, even though the animal has been drained of all blood. There have been literally thousands of cases, and no one has come up with a satisfactory explanation. Oh, bullshit. This is done by some local asshole, deliberate. Why would they do that? How the hell do I know? Maybe you should ask that cousin of yours, Ellie. Target wouldn't do anything like this. Hell, he wouldn't. Him and his jackass friends after a night of drinking. Target's your cousin? Yes. How do you know him? Look, let's get a vet out here to take a look at this. Maybe they can give us some answers. Maybe it is some predator. Bullshit! Predator doesn't slice off the head like that. That was done with a hunting knife. Target has one of those big hunting knives, doesn't he, Allie? Yes, he does. Oh, hell, just about everyone around here has a hunting knife, Luis. Women included. Let's not jump to any conclusions. I'll call the vet and we'll go from there. We don't know for sure yet that this is a criminal act. The hell it ain't. And looky here, whoever did this also burned that brand on her. That's not your brand? You know that's not my brand, Sheriff. I didn't know Grancher's still branded. I thought you used ear tags these days. City girl. We do both because... Because ear tags can come off in the brush. That's right, young fella. Ear tags can get snagged in the brush and fall off. Besides, the head's gone, so the ear tag wouldn't matter, would it? 
Look, my brand's a Circle R, which you can see over there. That brand's some weird upside down Y, and it's fresh. Nobody around here has a brand like that, but this is my cow. Now, who the hell would do that? Maybe we should go ask Phil. Oh, ho, ho, ho. don't get that crazy lunatic involved. Who's Phil? Ellie, can I talk to you over here for a second? Sure. How well do you know this guy? Brian, not very well. I just met him yesterday. Did you know he hitched a ride with Target yesterday morning out on Route 20 here? How do you know that? Because I had a conversation with Target yesterday in regards to another matter, and he told me. He said this Brian fellow told him his car broke down. There isn't any car broke down anywhere around here. I... He also called himself Don, not Brian. Now, I don't know what his story is, where he's from, or what he's doing here. But my gut is telling me that there's something not quite right with this guy. What's he told you? Not much. He is pretty secretive. To tell you the truth, Bill, my reporter instincts are telling me the very same thing. He doesn't seem dangerous to me, but there's something, I don't know, mysterious? Like he's hiding something. That's why I have him tag along, trying to see if I can find out anything. And... There's something kind of familiar, too, like I've seen him, or seen his face somewhere before. Look, I don't want to tell you your business, but I want you to be careful around this guy. I'm a big girl, Belle. I can take care of myself. That I know. But I do worry about you. I I appreciate that, Bill. Really. But I'll be fine. And if I find out anything that you should know about, I will tell you. You don't think you had anything to do with this mutilation, do you? I don't rule anything, but I doubt it. Sheriff, are you going to go pick up Target for this or what? No, I'm not. I told you I'm calling the vet. Ellie, you asked that cousin of yours what he did with this cow's head. Where's the damn head? Uh, there it is. Up in that tree. That storm is blowing in. I'll get the vet out here first thing tomorrow, Louise. Yeah. Tell him to bring a ladder if he wants to examine the head. It's really coming in fast, isn't it? And dark. It's almost like night. It does that around here sometimes. We should get back into town fast. So, you met my cousin. Yes, he's quite a character. He is that. He's not so bad, really. He can't help but get himself into trouble quite a bit. But how did you meet him? Right around here, actually. I was hitchhiking, of all things. So you did hitchhike from Chicago? Well, oh, not quite. Sheriff said your car might have broken down around here. Talking about me, eh? Well, that's not quite true. Uh, about the car. I'm not at all sure what is true about you, Brian. Or is it Don? I... I just gave that name to Target because... What is that guy doing? What? The guy in the vehicle behind me. He's really close. Is he crazy in this weather? Can you speed up? I am, but the visibility is terrible. I can barely see ten feet in front of the car. Who is it? It's not the sheriff, is it? No, it's a van. A van? Oh my god. A white van. Jesus, he's right on my ass. What the hell is he doing? You can't go faster? I am. Any faster, we're going to... Jesus Christ, he just rammed me. What the hell? Can you pull over? I I can't. We'll slide right off into the culvert and it's flooded. God damn it. What the hell is he trying to do? Kill us? Is it them? The couple in the van? Why would they be trying to kill us? Or me? What do they want? Who the hell are they? I can't see a goddamn thing in front of me. What's this asshole doing? He's fucking insane. Just try to keep ahead of him. What the hell do you think I'm doing? Jesus, here he comes again. Hold on. What happened? I don't know. He's gone. I think he turned off. I don't see him. What the hell was that all about? I can't imagine. Why are you stopping? One... I can't see a thing in front of me. And two, because I'm shaking like crazy. Okay, yeah. 
We need to calm down. And do you want me to drive? No. Ellie, I... Look, you said something before about a white van. That was a white van. What the hell is going on? Who was that? I don't know. Cut the crap, Brian. Don, or whatever the hell your name is. Who was that? Are you in some kind of trouble? I don't know. No, I... I, I don't know who it is. I swear, Ellie. I have a good mind to kick you out of my car and make you walk back to town or wherever it is the hell you came from. I'm sorry. Please calm down. I don't know what's going on. This mystery man routine is wearing really thin. I can't make you tell me anything if you don't want to, but I... Ellie... I told you, I... I don't think you'd believe me. I don't know if I really believe it myself. That's kind of insulting. Okay. But you can't say I didn't warn you. Well, go on. You know that airliner that crashed near here last week? Obviously. Well, I was on that plane. What do you mean? You had a ticket for that flight, and for some reason you didn't take it? You had, like, a what, psychic premonition? No, no, I... I was on that flight. I was on that airplane. don't understand. And you got off when it was making the connection? No. Well, I know this is crazy, but... I was on the plane when it exploded. You're right. I don't believe you. Get out of the car. I know it sounds insane. Trust me. But I swear it, Ellie. I was on that plane. Seat 14A. It, it exploded. I was thrown clear and, and I fell. I fell and I and I woke up in a field. That, that field by the abandoned house I pointed out before. You fell from an exploding plane. Fell thousands of feet to the ground without a parachute, I assume, and survived. Unharmed except for a small cut on your shoulder. Actually, that happened after I woke up. I tripped on a rock. Just woke up in a field. No broken bones, no injuries of any kind. I know, it sounds fantastic. Fantastic? It sounds impossible. I asked for the truth and I get a story that is more bizarre than any fiction I've ever read. I know. If I heard it from someone, I wouldn't believe it either. Brian, I really don't know what to make of this. Neither do I. Have you notified anyone? No. I know this is going to sound bizarre, Ellie, but I'm not sure I want to. Why? I I, I can't explain it. I, I, I know this is asking a lot, but could you keep this between just us for now anyway? If this is true. You're not going to be able to keep it secret for long. You're going to be identified. People will come looking for you. Maybe not. Everyone thinks I'm dead. Brian, this is just too... Is your name really Brian? Yes. Yes, it is. I told Target my name was Don because, well, because he's... I get it. Rain stopped. Ellie, I swear to you, what, what I told you is the truth, but... I don't know if I am completely unharmed. What do you mean? Are you in pain? No, not like that. It's my memory. I, so many things are hazy and they seem to be getting fuzzier. You may have had a concussion, which gets you to a doctor or a hospital. Somehow in the fall, I lost all my identification. My wallet, driver's license, credit cards. Wedding ring. Right, wedding ring. I can remember that I lived in Evanston, that my wife's name is... is... Teresa. I was flying to San Francisco for a business conference, but not much more than that. We have to get you to the hospital for a CT scan. Actually, an MRI would probably be more appropriate. I do remember having an MRI when I was a teenager. I fell off a ladder and cracked my head and had a concussion. But what I'm feeling isn't like a concussion at all. It's it's different. It's I, I don't know how to explain it. It's it's weird. Maybe we should go ask Phil. 
I heard you say that before about the kettle mutilation. Who's Phil? Philomena Good. I really shouldn't call her Phil. She hates that. She's... Okay. You want weird. She's our local psychic. You have a local psychic? She's really pretty amazing. She's told me things about myself that, well... She's amazing. And get this. She's this old woman who lives by herself out in the woods in a little cabin. Sells her natural herbs and remedies at the general store. Is the cabin made of gingerbread? Any children go missing? She's wonderful. If you don't want to go to the hospital, maybe she can help. Maybe she can help you remember things. Help you decide what you should do. As long as I don't have to drink any potions made with bat's eyes and spider legs. If she says it will help, you'll drink it. When? I've got nothing going on right now. This is about as close as we can get to her place by car. We'll have to walk the rest of the way into the woods. How far is it? Uh, about half a mile or so. It's an easy hike. I've done it many, many times. At least it stopped raining. Still overcast, but not quite as dark as it was before. That was incredible. This is part of the Nebraska National Forest. It's not nearly as dense as the forests of the Northwest, or the Northeast for that matter. It does get a little denser up further, though, and it's pretty flat the whole way. Yeah, everything's flat around here. Yeah, part of America's Great Plains. How long has she lived out here? No idea. I think her family's been on this land for a long time. Does she know we're coming? I mean, should you call her first? She doesn't have a phone, but I bet she knows we're coming. Oh, psychic, right. The van. What's the deal with the white van, Brian? Where have you seen it before? Oh, as I was waking up in the field after the plane exploded, two people were standing over me. I was just barely conscious, but I heard one of them, a man, I think, say, he's okay, he's coming around now, and they walked off. I opened my eyes, and I could see them getting to a white van, and then they drive away. Nothing more than that? Did, did you see a license plate? No, it was too far away, and my head was pretty messed up. Like I said, I'm not even sure if it was two men, a, a man and a woman. I don't know. Well, I'll pass that on to Bill, the sheriff Morris, and tell him what happened to us. Maybe he'll come up with something. Yeah, I hope so. I love it out here. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it is. So, what should I expect at Philomena's? <laughs> Good question. I've learned not to anticipate what to expect at Philomena's. What does that mean? It's an unusual place. When you're there, you feel like you stepped into another world, another reality. I feel like that's already happened to me. Well, then maybe you'll feel great at home. Seriously, though. It's a place unto itself. Nothing to be nervous about or scared, nothing like that, but, well, you'll see. Just don't call her Phil. She hates that. There it is. See it up there? That small cabin? That's it? It looks ancient. It could very well be. Maybe we should have left a trail of breadcrumbs so we know the way back so a search party can find us. Relax, really. What a place. Covered in moss, old tin plates and animal hides nailed to the outside, cordwood scattered around, an old axe in a tree stump, smoke coming out of the chimney. I hope we're not on the menu. And weird, I'm, I'm suddenly getting a strong sense of deja vu. There she is. Hey, Philomena. 
Here you are. What took you so long? Archer's been waiting for you. Taking Flight is a production of CNY Pod Players, created by Stephen Wagner and Sarah Krill, written, directed, and edited by Stephen Wagner, and featuring the voice talents of Josh Beckinsale, Paul Bowler, Carrie Bostick, Kara Buttermore, Sarah Krill, Jim Drake, Lonnie Etter, Lonnie Etter Jr., Adam Kayser, Jessica Kayser, Bob Kaplan, William Lamphere, Melissa Leacono, Deborah Martin, Hannah Myers, Taylor Mills, Kathy Mosier, Danielle Priori, Jim Revenaugh, Raina Schneider, Paul Stern, and Stephen Wagner. Music by Janelle Crouch. Next time on Taking Flight. There you are. What took you so long? Roger's been waiting for you. Roger, that raven is smarter than most teenagers around here. In a really creepy way. I hope Brian doesn't get too freaked out by this place. It can be quite unnerving under the best of circumstances. Would you be able to tell us who those people were? The people in the white van? Come and villains, come and villains. Philomena? They should be savage for what they did. Savage. Rocks tied around their necks and thrown into the Box Butte Reservoir, that's what. Not to belabor the witch theme too much, but does she have some kind of power over the place? I don't think it's her. I think it's the area itself. This whole area is considered a paranormal hotspot. Can I see some identification? I don't have any identification. I lost my wallet. No driver's license? No credit card? No, sir. If you hurt Ellie in any way, financially, physically, emotionally, any way whatsoever, you're going to lose a lot more than your ID. You catch my drift? But now Ellie has me curious about what else is in her X-Files file cabinet. This photo... The men in this photo, it's me. That's next time on Taking Flight. Hi, this is Sarah Krill. Please help us spread the word about Taking Flight. Be sure to rate us and review on iTunes, which makes it easier for others to find and enjoy our podcast.